Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon here from alphatrends.net. Today's Friday, the 12th of July. I hope you had a good week in the market. The markets were up across the board. We uh, saw a little bit of volatility, obviously. And uh, the biggest groups were the biotechs, which I've been very bullish on. And then the Russell 2000, which I've been calling a waste of time, but that thing, you know, things have changed there, obviously. So let's take a look. You know, we had big news this week with the CPI and uh, people expecting a greater chance, a 90 plus percent chance of an interest rate cut in September. And, you know, regardless of what the news is, we have to be aware of when those news events come because they shape the psychology of the market participants. And what we see, though, is that the psychology is represented through price action. Only price pays. You never hear me talking about what I think the Fed is going to do. I simply don't know and really I don't care. What I'm interested in as a trader is right here on these charts, price action. We continue to be in a primary uptrend in the S&P 500. We're above this trend line. We're above a rising 20-day moving average, above a rising 50-day moving average, above a 200-day moving average. We saw that pullback on uh, Thursday. It came right to the rising 5-day moving average. If you're familiar with my work, it's an innocent until proven guilty while it's above a rising 5-day moving average. If we break below this low right here, which is our most recent and relevant higher low, then we get a little bit more defensive. We have to be aware of what happens when the Fed cuts rates. Well, typically it leads to market selling uh, if you look at history. Doesn't mean right away, but that's the trend six months later. So you have to be aware of these things. But remember that only price pays. If you're just going to throw away your stocks, be aware of where you're throwing away your stocks and ask yourself, does it really make sense just to sell because other people are selling while we're above and right at a rising five-day moving average, which is above a 20-day moving average, 50-day moving average, et cetera? I would say no. The NASDAQ, a little bit deeper pullback, and we saw some volatility here right at the end of the day today in the last half hour that saw the uh, NASDAQ close below that five-day moving average. The five-day moving average, of course, is that orange line right there, and that puts us a little bit cautious for next week. It's possible that in the near term, this is a lower high. Well, if we see a lower low below 490-ish, then perhaps we're going to see a deeper pullback down to the 20-day moving average. If that pullback doesn't hold at the 20-day moving average, then we would look to lower levels, such as maybe the anchored volume weighted average price from this gap right here, which actually coincides with the 20-day uh, moving average. So if that fails, we then look to this level, and we look for other levels. And as it gets to these different levels of, of interest based on the VWAP, such as 486, it doesn't mean automatically buy. It means start to look for a place to potentially buy and do that on a shorter term time frame. Can you manage risk? We have a lot of earnings uh, starting to come up, and that's uh, you know each stock based on its own merits is the way I always look at it. Don't be so concerned about the Fed and what they say on TV. Those people aren't traders. If you're a trader, then you're in the right place here because that's what I do. And that's the time frame that I talk about as a swing trader. I'm aware of the bigger term picture. And this week, the Russell 2000 broke beyond this little peak right here. On Wednesday's video, I said, you know, things are starting to show a little bit of relative strength. And I did not participate here. But if you were really interested in participating in the Russell 2000 on Thursday, uh, then this is straight out of my book. It's a chapter in the book. Is uh, and, and really one of the first articles I ever wrote about the VWAP. Here's a, a one-minute time frame. And this is on Thursday. We gapped up. We pulled back a little bit. It got back above the volume-weighted average price from that gap. My article that I wrote, in 2008 was called Chase the Gap or Wait for VWAP, and it outlined this is where you buy with a stop on your here. In my anchored VWAP book, I said you don't buy the pullback to the volume-weighted average price, but you buy here as it starts to rally away from it with a stop under here. So even if you bought it two oh you know, 209 and a half, still great opportunities to make money there if the Russell 2000 was on your radar. So right now, the Russell's getting a little bit extended in the near term, and maybe it needs to consolidate a little bit. We are breaking out on the weekly time frame, so that's good. Maybe it continues to run. The bigger group for me, as uh, I've been pointing out over and over again the last couple of weeks, is the energy that's been building in the biotechs. And this group simply looks more bullish to me than the Russell 2000. We haven't taken out the year-to-date high yet, but the year-to-date high is up here at... Uh, what is this price? Let's uh, look together. I meant to grab this. So this uh, this high is up at 104. So we've still got 
you know, five points up to that level. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, I got involved in this one over here. I've sold one third so far and I'm holding the balance. We've got a great looking weekly chart. I also mentioned in the, uh, uh, in a couple of places, one being, um, trader TV on Tuesday that, uh, Amgen was one, uh, that I like and Amgen, I got involved right over here as it started to break. Uh, what price? I think I bought it at 317, took a third off at 320 and I have a two thirds, uh, I'm sorry, I have a one third position left in here. I took another third off as it broke out with a $9 gain and I'm holding the final third. So there's opportunities out there, even as extended as, you know, the NASDAQ may look, you don't have to just go to those NASDAQ stocks. You can look at other groups that are starting to participate in a better way. And again, those biotechs are a great place to be able to continue to move higher. Uh, I think that, you know, the better likelihood for a purchase is maybe they continue up a little bit, but then next week, maybe they start to digest those gains a little and then get going higher. I've been talking over and over again about TGTX. I spoke about the buy in here and the sells on the way up. I got out here and then back in here, uh, sold some up here today. Most of it I sold yesterday at 20, uh, 21, 22, but that's been a monster stock and there's opportunities out there be beyond these. Sarepta, is one that you, you should uh, take a close look at. Short sellers sold 3 million shares between approximately these prices right here. And then as the stock gapped up, obviously they were wrong. This company is expected to do uh, big earnings this year. Um, if, if you look at the anchor from that peak, this is actually the month to date anchor. And I think on Monday, keep a very close eye on SRPT with a stop somewhere under here, whatever is most appropriate for you. Don't ask me what I did with the stock, it doesn't matter. My stop is going to be under here. Maybe your stock is under there. Do what's right for you. Why would you care about how much money I make? It's about what you do in your account with your money. The opportunities are there. The most important part of any stock setup is where do you get out? Well, if it breaks a higher high over here and then it breaks below this higher low, the definition of trend that we thought was emerging doesn't exist, why on earth would you continue to hold it? What's my price target? The price target is always the same. It's higher. Let the market tell us when to get out. Um, don't limit yourself by a price target. It can go well beyond any price targets as these markets have done. Um, back to the biotechs, they continue to behave well. Financials broke out this week as well. Raise your stops in there. Don't forget about earnings for the bank groups. Energy names, as we know, last week when we spoke about them, we were saying, they seem like, where have they come from? They just rallied up here. Where did they have the potential to go? Well, they broke out and trapped people at the 50-day moving average. They spit it out down to the 200-day moving average. Now we're above a flat to rising five-day moving average. So in the intermediate term, I think you can start to pay attention to these stocks next week. We still have a declining 50-day moving average. So I'm not convinced that they're going to get going uh, in a big way here quickly. But uh, And I don't trade energy names, so I'm really not going to talk about them anymore. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been actually behaving really well technically. And by that, I mean here on the daily chart, on the left, first of all, uh, we have the anchor that, uh, you know, this, this market broke higher in October of 2023. And then we saw a test of that view app right here. That was the low of this year. That purple is where the low of the year is. Well, we stayed above those levels and we came down to this anchor that we've been talking about the last couple weeks. And now when we rallied up this week, this bounce so far is trapped under this black anchored volume weighted average price from the beginning of the, the year. That's the year to date volume weighted average price. And that had previously been support. Now it seems to be holding his resistance. We're below key moving averages, which are declining. I just don't see much reason uh, to be excited about Bitcoin. Things can change uh, in here. But you know, we've got a downtrend. We've got lower highs and lower lows. We're trying to stabilize in here, but stabilization doesn't mean a reason to buy. It means a reason to look at it on shorter term timeframes and say, is there evidence the buyers are taking control? And my answer is no, I don't see that evidence. So we'll uh, continue to update that. Have a good weekend. Hit that like button on the uh, YouTube and uh, talk to you next week.